So here in our project, we have two packages, a create package and a processing package for our partitions. And they work similarly, but let's start with the partition create package here. And in the first step, we have an execute SQL task that reads data from our partition management table and gets the database name, the cube name, the measure group name, the SQL that defines our partition, as well as the create XMLA template and the delete obsolete partition flag. Now this data that's returned is stored in a single variable called the partition config list and we use that in the next step, the for each loop container that reads each row which would represent each partition configuration. As it reads each row, it's going to store the columns in separate variables. Now we're going to use these variables in the subsequent steps. First, we have another execute SQL task that's going to take that SQL definition that defines each of our year month combinations from our fact table. And it's going to store that in another variable called the partition creation list, which is used in turn in another for each loop container where we're going to walk through each row, each partition definition, and store that partition information in separate variables, the ID, the name, the where clause, as well as the slice. Now in this loop, we're going to check to see if that partition exists, because if it does, we do not need to create it. There's a script task here that's going to walk through the object model, so we do import the namespace for analysis services and we use the connection that's defined in our package and we use the cube and the partition and the measure group information that's coming from the partition management table and we have this variable that we're using the B partition found here this is going to be initialized as true and then as we walk through the database through the cube the measure group and the partition if any of those things are not found then that partition found variable is going to be set to false and that's what gets passed back into the package and assigned to the partition exists variable so then that gets used to determine whether or not to continue. So there's a precedence constraint here that looks at that partition exists value and says if it's false, then move on to the next step, which is the replace tags. So here we're passing again some of those partition variables and walking through this process of taking that template, that XMLA script that was stored in a column that's now a variable we're assigning that to a string variable and then using the replace function to take each of those placeholder tokens and update them with a corresponding variable that's part of this current for each loop iteration. So when that's done, the resulting string is stored in this variable partition XML creation, which then in turn gets used in this create partition, which is an execute DDL task, which takes that XMLA script and runs it against the analysis services server. And that's what creates our partitions. Now, when all of the partitions have been processed, if the delete obsolete partitions variable is set to true, then it's going to run another script task that then compares this list of partitions that we have from this execute SQL task to the actual partitions that exist in the cube. And then we'll delete anything that's in the cube that's not in this list. So let's go ahead and execute this package. And then when that's done, notice that this delete obsolete partitions didn't complete because we have the flag set not to do that. So if we go back to Management Studio and refresh our partitions here, we'll see that all of these partitions are created and the original partition that was there is still there because we didn't run the obsolete partitions script task. So let's fix that because now our cube's not going to be quite right because it's going to 
duplicate whatever rows were in that partition with the other year month combination. So let's just update that column now to go ahead and remove obsolete partitions and back to our development environment. Let's run this package again. And we see that it's not running the replace tags this time because each of those partitions already exists. So when it is completed checking that list, then it goes ahead and does the deletion of the obsolete partitions. So let's go back to Management Studio, refresh. We can see that that reseller sales is now gone. So let's go back to our package stop this execution and let's now look at the partition processing package. It works very similarly. This time we have the execute SQL task that's going to get the processing XMLA and we're storing the results in a variable. We're also running an execute SQL task that's going to get the year month combinations for whatever range that we specify here and it's going to assign that to a new partition list. Then we have a for each loop container that's going to iterate through each of those partition configuration lists, which right now is just one record that we have in there. Then it's going to use the other new partition list that has each of our year month combinations and assign that to a year month variable. Then it's going to check for the existence of those partitions and then if they do exist then it's going to run the replace tags to go ahead and update the XMLA to set the partition ID for that processing. and then it will actually do the processing. And that's with the execute DDL task. So let's go ahead and process that and that will bring our cube up to date with the new partitions. When this is complete, we can go back to Management Studio and we can actually browse our cube. But we can see that we have the different time periods of data. So that's how we set up dynamic partitioning.